Hi, I'm Scott, and in these videos we're going to discuss how to create a 2D plan for a planting landscape bed. It'll be a simple bed, but we're going to discuss the mechanics of what it looks like to get started in SketchUp for 2D, and then how to translate that into a document in layout. So we're going to start in this video, we're going to discuss importing locations, which is basically a satellite image of a property, bringing that into SketchUp. We're going to draw the base map. We're going to create the new bed lines. And then we're going to look at what makes our SketchUp model ready for layout, how to prepare it for layout. There's very little there, but we're going to review it just so you can see kind of how that's working. And then in the next video, we'll talk about what it's like to bring it into layout. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, this also assumes that we have a SketchUp template that coordinates with a layout template. And it also assumes that we have a scrapbook with 2D plant assets. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we'll start by opening SketchUp. And we're going to go into our landscape design template. It's going to be right here. And we've got our tools, our styles. We'll go ahead and make that small. And here is our template. We've got a couple of predefined scenes and some tags that are already in our template. So let's get started by deleting this and this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead to File, Geolocation, Add Location. Here you can type in an address. In this case, we're gonna just zoom in and we're gonna pick an arbitrary location. Uh, Forest Park in St. Louis, pretty cool. Okay, so you will, once you've got to the appropriate zoom level, we will hit select region. And now we're going to get to pick the size. This is going to be the amount of map that we are going to bring into our model. And when we import this, it's going to be at scale. So let's go ahead and hit import. And now we have our map data in SketchUp. And it is to scale, and it is facing north if we use the red axis as the left and right, the x axis, and the green as the up and down as the y axis. So, for example, if I were to come and measure the length of this car, I hit L for line, and then I go to the front of the car. You can see in the bottom right hand corner that. That car is about 16 foot 4 inches. So it is to scale. Now when these maps are brought into scale you can see this red bounding box. And the other thing I'd like you to notice is that it brings in two new tags. One called location terrain, one called location snapshot. Snapshot is a satellite image and it is flat. The terrain brings in elevation data. So if there's a hill it'll show, it's kind of hard to see here, but it'll show that it's got a hill. The location terrain uh, is, for our purposes, pretty much useless. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, but either way, it comes in hidden, so we're going to want to see that. We're going to select both of those boxes. We zoom in, there's technically two boxes. And then we're going to right click and unlock. So you're gonna to wanna to unlock that. I'm gonna delete location terrain. And then I'm gonna to choose to delete the entities with it. And then for this, I'm going to then go to entity info and I'm gonna switch the tag for survey. I think in the future, I'll just change the name of this tag to be location snapshot so I can import images and they'll already be named appropriately. But for this will be an important step because later on this is going to be on a scene called Final Plan and it's going to hide the survey. Maybe it's a style. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, come back to our working scene here. 
So what we're going to want to do is once we get this onto the survey tag, we can now start um, doing the next step, which will be locating the north, and then we're going to realign this. There are two ways to realign it. We're going to start simple. We can do some advanced alignment in other videos. But for now, what we'll do is let's go ahead and hit align. We're just going to draw it somewhere out of the way in the corner. And then I'll just do like this kind of arrow. And then I'll highlight this arrow and I'll type G, which is a custom shortcut, to group. You can also right click and hit G, uh, right click and hit group. And what that's going to be is when we rotate this image so that the lines are aligned with the axis, the lines of the building, it's going to be an easy step to know how to turn the compass in layout. So the goal of orienting this is that it is very fast and easy to use SketchUp when you're locking the axis. But the issue that we're going to have with tracing this building is that it does not align with the axis. So you could kind of do this, hit the down arrow once or twice to get perpendicular. There, there are ways to do that, but it'll be much easier on you if this can be aligned in this sense right here, where say the edge of the building finding a corner was in line with the axis. So this uh, one of the ways that we can do that is we can set the axis. We're not going to show that now. That'll be a later step. For now, we're going to select the map. We're going to shift select the arrow that we made that's going to show north. We're going to hit M for move, single click, and now we're going to pan it until that axis is on the corner of a building. So. Let's go ahead and make it um, this corner of the building over here. You can kind of zoom in close, maybe grab that corner, then it'll lock to the axis. Then, while this is still both selected, we're going to hit Q for rotate. We're going to hit the up arrow key to lock the plane, just a good habit. We're going to select the axis. And now we're going to try to get this dashed line as straight with the building as possible. It'll be easier if we have a further run or the further we go because it gives you a more granular control over that line. It's going to be a little hard to get it exact when we're that close to the axis. So we'll pull it away, we'll line it up, we'll single click, and now it's turning for us. And we'll align that and align it with the red axis, it'll snap to that and now we've just rotated the picture. So if I hit you know, control one and then do camera parallel projection, like we're looking straight down on this, now it's aligned. And you can see that because we also move the arrow. When we get into our 2D plan and we're orienting the compass, we'll be able to rotate that to closely align with that arrow. So again, that'll help with a later step. In fact, while we're at it, let's select it and let's put it on the tag guides. Good habit. So let's go back to our working view here. And now we're going to trace the building. So this will be pretty easy. This is what we call the base map. Base map is essentially terminology for the base drawings of the existing conditions. Okay, so we're going to draw the base map, and we're just going to draw a couple of pieces of the structure. We're going to start at the axis, we'll come across the back, lock the axis, we'll do this here, here, to here, and we're going to go across the front to about there. Maybe I could have picked an easier building. <laughs> and then lastly, we're going to put an arc on the front of this thing. And we'll clean that up. So essentially, this is our structure right here. So we've got our plan like this. And then lastly, let's do the big arc. We're going to use a three-point arc for this. So I'm just going to grab a point out here, point out here, 
and that's going to help me kind of do some alignment. And then we're going to close the loop. So these lines are arbitrary. They're really just for serving the purpose of closing the loop. Again, this is a little bit hasty because our goal here is to produce something that we can import into SketchUp. And I think lastly, we're going to draw a couple of these lines here. I don't think that'll hurt. Now, when you're working with CAD, there's going to be a threshold of accuracy that you're trying to achieve. If you're producing a drawing for machining and it needs to be accurate to the ten thousandth of an inch, then just tracing a plan is not going to work. For our purposes here, I don't need to type in the dimensions because I just need it close enough to be able to produce a drawing to communicate the intention of the plant layout. So, uh, so that's kind of up to your discretion how meticulous or how accurate it needs to be. My recommendation is to always ask what the drawing demands. When I'm shooting measurements for a patio against the house, I'm gonna go to the inch, I'm gonna measure the house. If I'm doing a bed in the yard, it just needs to be kind of close. It's not really moving the needle because I need three more shovels of mulch or three less shovels of mulch. So typically I recommend that the thing you're designing guides the level of accuracy and particularness that you need. So, all right, so if I turn off the survey, here's what we have. We kind of had this drawing. We got a landscape bed in front of the sidewalk that we want to landscape. And then there are some other beds that we like to add to the side. So our next step will be to draw bed lines. And I think it'd be cool if we started here on the corner we did an arc that came out this way. Maybe it breaks through the middle of the walkway here and then comes around to the corner here. And I just think that would be a cool landscape bed to do. I'll use the erase tool to clean that out. And then it'll almost be like this is grass on the outside here, but then there's this cool wavy landscape bed through the middle. So uh, I've drawn my bed lines. If you're drawing bed lines and you'd like to know about how far out you're coming out with those bed lines, let's say I know I only have, say, five to seven feet off of this house and I want to draw some beds here. I can hit T for tape measure. I can pull off of the line here and type in, say, six feet. Hit it. And now this line is giving me a guide for six feet. So I can then draw with the arc tool and just kind of loosely gauge beds that are somewhat six feet off of the building. And that's gonna give me an average depth of six feet. This tape measure dashed line does not stick the way other lines do. These lines here are sticky and their actual geometry, this dash line is a reference. So it operates a little differently go ahead and select that, delete it. Closing the loops will be helpful for your estimating or your prepare preparations because you can click on this and in the entity info it's going to produce a square footage of area. If you'd like to know the linear distance of this bed edge, you can double click which selects the surface and the bounding lines and then hit shift to deselect the surface and then deselect the building and now you've got a linear distance of about 83 and a half feet. So that can be helpful information when you're producing the material list for the project. Okay, so we've got our beds. The last step here is we're going to review how this is prepared for layout. Now this SketchUp template comes loaded with predetermined uh, tags. This is a template that I produced uh, custom. So these are tags that I've named and decided on and the names themselves aren't as important but what is important is that the names are going to be the same names uh, consistent throughout the templates through your layout template through your SketchUp template because what we'll do in the next step is when we import this we're going to change the reference 
to our new drawing here and the way that we have things set up on tags and scenes is going to translate then into that layout template. It's going to really expedite uh, some of the tediousness of getting things from the 3D to the 2D. So uh, I will clean this up. We don't use this tag, so I will delete the location snapshot tag. I'm going to look at my final plan. I'm going to zoom out here, kind of zoom in over here. And then I'll hit right click and then hit update. And so now I've updated the scene here. And that's about it. This scene has the survey turned off. Here's the tags that are hidden and then also shown. And that's it. As you become familiar with SketchUp, you'll start adding a little bit more detail on the SketchUp side of things. Maybe there's a survey that you're importing and then scaling to also overlay to help draw that base map. Uh, maybe you'll draw property lines and you'll bring that into your 2D plan. So those are all things that can be added to the SketchUp side. The, what's really helpful, and I think you'll see this when we get into layout, is things like plants are more easily handled on the layout side and things like bed edges, house walls, those, you know, kind of like the main heartbeat of the line work is more easily handled on the SketchUp side than trying to draw that in layout. So that's it. Let's get to layout.